I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Levin Bertier. I'm going to I'm going to take your last name and anglicize it for everybody, <laughs> Bertier. <laughs> Yeah, who has been with Barco for more than 20 years, taking up different technical roles and commercial roles for the company. Since 2014, he's been part of the company's meeting experience business, but I think you and I met even before that. We a did. long time ago. And uh, he's now heading up the ClickShare product management team, which is a very uh, exciting and successful product for Barco, and taking on the responsibility for all the businesses go to market and marketing activity. Today, he's responsible for Barco's strategic marketing activities targeted at the digital workplace. Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. Let's start with some acronyms. I'm sure you're all familiar with BYOD, but we brought a new one. It's BYOM. Some people ask me, is it bring your own mother? No, it's not. But we'll come to the answer in a second. At Barco, we've done quite some thought leadership research over the last years. And uh, since Intel actually coined BYOD back in 2009, we also found this was a major driver, of course, of what is happening in meetings, what is happening in the workplace, and how it is driving behavior. So this is a slide back from 2013, where we saw that people are talking BYOD and it, that it seems to be changing the way we work. Another important element is, of course, the role of technology in the meeting rooms. Uh, another piece of research we ran, we exposed people to stress. The clicker was failing or the projector was failing, the remote was missing. People had heart rates of 179 when technology let them down. Not sure about you, but if I go running, I don't make 179. So bad technology can kill you. Anyway. Some new questions we asked ourselves last year. Have meetings changed? What are meetings like for remote participants? How can we drive engagement? Because that is what digital workplace is all about. And of course, what's the impact? What's the future of meetings? So we talked to 1,500 white collars. If I would have gotten more than 10 minutes, I would have gone into the details, the differences from region to region, from generation to generation. All of that available on our website. But let's stick to the highlights now. The world is turning to huddles. First key finding, and I hear all of you think, so what? Well, people actually prefer huddles over standard meetings. So what does this mean? It's no longer about structured meetings. It's no longer about planned meetings. No, it's about informal. It's about flexibility. It's about my way of working. I want to have a meeting whenever I want to have one and I'm not going to rely on all kinds of booking systems and so on. Huddle is changing the way we work together. Second one, and again, pretty obvious, meetings are getting shorter. But I heard a lot of slides, I heard a lot of people say already today, meetings are a waste of time, and everybody's throwing millions and billions uh, that bad meetings cost us. Well, all of us, we want shorter meetings, and the ideal meeting seems to be somewhere around 30 minutes. Other big finding, and again, so what? Meetings are all about remote. Yes, they're all about remote. And I remember when we launched ClickShare seven, eight years ago, we solved the friction inside the meeting rooms. How do we make people join the conversation within the room? But that reality has completely changed because today, the majority of the meetings already feature remote attendees. And even more, one out of four meetings is exclusively with remote attendance. So again, a fundamental dynamic we are observing here in the workplace. Last but not least, and again, so what? We all know this. Video is becoming standard. Yes, it's becoming standard. To the extent that 88% of people prefer video conferencing in huddles, so pure audio is uh, almost gone. And I'm going to point even to the number here for Generation Z. That's my one remark on the different generations. For them, it's 93%. So video is everywhere. And that's a change brought to us, amongst others, by FaceTime. But as we move to video, a number of new frictions are coming up. First of all, in the last six months, people say they use, on average, six to be honest, it was 5.87, but I rounded it. People, on average, use six different conferencing solutions. Now, think about the poor IT department trying to standardize. By the way, not on the slides, but 71% of respondents say 
we can choose the conferencing solution we want. In other words, we don't follow the guidance we get from an IT department. Big change. And of course, this is bringing a lot of new frictions. And again, I don't want to walk through all of them, but it's related to hearing people. It's related to bad video quality. It's related to the technology not doing what I want it to do. Or it's me wasting valuable time trying to make technology work. That's huge. And it leads to the following situation, where 55% of our respondents say, it's hard for me to follow and to contribute. That's more than 50%, more than one out in two saying so. Almost one out in two say, I'm frustrated or I'm disengaged. Remember, digital workplace, it's all about engagement. And last but not least, they give up. And they do something very, very bizarre. I'm going to use BYOD. I'm going to use my own personal technology, because that's the one I know. So let's face reality. And uh, we did a number of reality checks. First of all, imagine the following situation. How do I move from conferencing tool to conferencing tool? Remember, on average, we use six different tools. And I bet that all your agendas look like this. You start the morning with a Zoom meeting. You have a face-to-face. -face, you move to WebEx. You move to Teams. You move to Skype. And you keep on going. How the hell do you deal with this in the workplace? How do I move from room to room? Because shiny marketing pictures, I know all about it. They look so great until the moment you come into the room and you're like, hmm, room A has interface A, room B has interface B, room C has interface C. How the hell am I going to deal with all these different interfaces? How can I use the tools I'm familiar with? Because in many rooms, you see new tablets appearing. So it's like, let's control the meeting from the desk. Let's use a desktop PC, or let's use a Skype room system, whatever. Let's control it from the tablet. But I don't know how to do it. This is the device I know. This is what I'm familiar with. It's my laptop. I use it day in, day out. So why can I not bring my own meeting? B-Y-O-M. I want to bring my own meeting, and I want to have the freedom to use whatever I want to use. Big friction, of course. Here's the answer, ClickShare Conference. You may have heard about it, you may not yet have heard about it, but this is what we do. We're going to make conferencing simple, wireless, and agnostic. And what does this mean? It's ClickShare. So you know it's wireless by definition. So the camera in the room, the microphones in the room, they're wireless from now on. All you have to do is use the ClickShare button. But there's more than that. It's simple, it's ease of use, because I move from room to room. It's the same experience, whether there's a Jabra, whether there's a Logitech, whether there's a Poly. It's going to be exactly the same experience. And last but not least, it's agnostic. It works with my tools. If I go for BlueJeans, it works. If I go for Zoom, it works. That's the promise we're making with ClickShare Conference. Now, that was the last slide already. I forgot to include the slide, of course, where you can see us. Hall 12, F120. We have a lot of demos, so please come and check it out. And if that is not compelling enough a reason for you to join, tomorrow at 5 p.m., Belgian Beer Bar. Thank you. <laughs>